Hello, my name is Johnny Binder, General Curator for Cameron Park Zoo. Giraffes are one of the most popular animals at the zoo, and today we're going to tell you about a very special giraffe that touched all of our hearts. Let's step into the wild. <laughs> As zookeepers, we're privileged to work with many magnificent animals and to ensure that they have a healthy and productive life. Sometimes the job's only reward is knowing that you have made a difference in that animal's life. But on rare occasions, a zoo professional is acknowledged by others in their field, and that's almost as special as the connection that you have with your animals. Cameron Park zookeepers, Rachel Chapel and Krista Seaberger, had the privilege of working with Julie a reticulated giraffe whose health issues required extensive specialized care. They recently received an award for excellence in zookeeping from the International Association of Giraffe Care Professionals for their care of Julie. Julie arrived at the Cameron Park Zoo in 1993 at the age of approximately 13 months old. Um, as soon as she arrived, it was apparent that she had some sort of abnormality with her front right fetlock. Um, throughout the years, um, it didn't really cause her any problems, but by 1995, the swelling of the joint did increase, and so they went ahead and did some radiographs on it to try and diagnose an underlying cause. What came back from the radiograph was that they could either do orthopedic surgery to retard the growth plate, or they could go with a less invasive measure of providing uh, corrective shoes and trimming. And ultimately, they did go with the less invasive corrective shoeing and trimming. They started that in 1995 and it started out very primitive and experimental. It was basically um, a piece of wood with a metal plate on the bottom to help with wear and tear. Um, that lasted for about four weeks and then in 1996 they developed a new technique of using um, a product called Technovite. Um, and that's kind of like a, a clay that hardens. In 1997, they did a combination of Technovite plus fiberglass for her corrective shoe. Um, and then from 1998 through about 2006, and we actually didn't have to do any of the shoeing. It was just the um, trimming. In 2007, we began doing corrective shoeing again. It was a combination of a product geared for the use in horses called Superfast, and then we did a coating on top of that uh, with a product called Adhere. And we used that method for several years. Um, and then after a couple years of doing the Superfast shoes, uh, her rotation in her joint it became more severe. The disease that she had was progressive, so over time, the, the arthritis got worse, the rotation got worse, so her comfort level uh, began to decrease and so the process of adding the shoe became longer and then the trimming he had to be um, what we would call more aggressive. It just means that he had to trim her for longer periods of time and take off more hoof material than he had previously and so the combination of doing more aggressive work for a longer period of time she became where she didn't want to go into the shoe anymore and so at that point she needed the medical care still but we weren't able to provide it for her in the setting that we had been for so many years. In 2009 Rachel and I developed a new training program for Julie um, because of the difficulty we were having with her in the shoot and the progression of her disease uh, we changed gears and actually developed a more semi to free contact training program with her inside the barn. Um, Julie felt the most comfortable and safe inside the barn so we changed our training methods to work around her. So. We set up a special strap system in there and Julie was trained to come up to the straps. We started actually trimming her front feet inside the barn um, in stall two. Uh, this was fairly effective in getting her hoofs trimmed. Um, we were able to keep them short and keep the pressure off her feet. Um, but at, you know, throughout time, it, it is more difficult. We couldn't get to her back feet because you know, that was a safety issue with her. 
Another challenge that we faced with uh, working with her in the barn for hoof trimming is actually we hadn't yet found a way to apply a shoe like we had been doing in the shoot. So at this point we were just focused towards keeping her feet trimmed and you know just keeping her hoof health as best as we could. We used to give her um, injections for pain relief out in the chute, but we actually also moved that inside to the barn and started working with her so she could receive those inside at a more regular basis. And part of working inside the barn as well, we developed a lot of trust with her. Um, we did get to a point where she would actually lay down and let us work with her in the down position, and that is extremely can be difficult to get especially a hoofstock animal to do because they can be very flighty and you're putting them in a vulnerable position but we ultimately got Julie to participate and do that behavior as well. In order to do all of the training the specialized program that we made for her inside the barn working in a semi-free contact system we actually did had to consult with outside institutions um, uh, for example Oakland Zoo and the Columbus Zoo um, we got some support from them and then ultimately just the support from our own supervisor and upper management to trust us with such a large task to work with her in those settings you know really made it happen for her. Julie was not only a unique giraffe but I also feel like she was a unique animal. She had a lot of hands-on experience throughout her entire life that really helped to shape and form the personality that she had. So compared to the other two giraffe that we have, she was just, her personality just really shone through. She interacted more with us, more so than the other two. Um, so for me, that really uh, solidified a bond with her. The fact that she trusted me uh, really meant a lot because she did have trust issues with people from all the medical stuff over the years and it's just hard not to love a giraffe that is like that. For me I think and along with what Rachel said the fact that she kind of bonded with me from when I started here and that she trusted me and you know I think that was special and I think just besides the us two and the zookeepers involved but I think the public really identified with her a lot because um, you know, with her unique personality and plus the disability, I mean, people were interested in her and the care that we were doing. We actually had a lot of people that really enjoyed watching the hoof trimming in the barn through the window up on the deck. And, you know, I can tell you how many times I'd go walk the public side and people would say, you know, where's, where's the giraffe with the foot, you know, the special foot. So I think besides just working with her and getting that opportunity to work with such a unique animal with a, I mean, it's pretty challenging with a severe disability like that, but I really think she impacted the, the public and the community here as well. Over the past decade, giraffe populations have suffered a 30% drop in their overall population numbers. Um, currently the estimates are no higher than 80,000 for all nine subspecies, but if you break down the actual subspecies, the numbers uh, do get pretty critical. The Rothschild giraffe, there are less than 670 of them and they are classified as endangered. The reticulated giraffe, they're down 80% in numbers from 1999, so there's less than 5,000 of them and they are probably going to be classified as endangered pretty soon. Even the Maasai giraffe, they're down 80% in the last 20 years, uh, probably no more than 10,000. The giraffe are actually doing worse than elephants and rhinos, giant pandas, if you start looking at the subspecies. So it's pr some pretty shocking numbers. If you are interested in learning more about giraffe conservation, you can visit these websites. Cameron Park Zoo is committed to conservation and the work that we do with an individual animal can help an entire species. When Rachel and Krista went to Oakland, California to present a paper to the International Association of Giraffe Care Professionals, they knew that by sharing what they had learned working with Julie, they could improve the quality of life for other giraffes with similar issues. They also knew that they wanted to help the entire species as a memorial to Julie. So they had a t-shirt design to sell at the conference and they raised over $1,500 for giraffe conservation. Seeming little things can make a huge difference and this money will help to ensure that the giraffes will have a place in the wild for many years to come. 
Thank you for joining us on this edition of Step Into the Wild, and please come out and visit your zoo soon. The Cameron Park Zoo in Waco is a member by invitation of the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums and is an accredited member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, a worldwide organization of more than 200 accredited members who are leaders in global wildlife conservation and assistance in helping animals in their native habitat. For more information, visit CameronParkZoo.com.